Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play The Journey Down Chapter 1, and thank you for watching. The Journey Down is a point-and-click adventure-style game, guys, in the vein of other classic, you know, games like Broken Age or, uh, you know, Detective Grimoire. It really, really reminds me of the inner world, uh, and the way that they kind of use their puzzle items, and the universe just is kind of strange and unique and charming, kind of like in the inner world was. Uh, it released on Steam... January 2013, which means that this is a pretty old game to be checking out here, guys, but there is a special reason for that, which we'll be discussing here in a bit. It was developed and published by Sky Goblin. You can go ahead and get Chapter 1 of The Journey Down for $6.99. It's also available on Desura and mobile devices. There'll be links for all that kind of stuff in the description, guys. Now, full disclosure, guys, I sent a letter to the developer saying, hey, your game looks really awesome. I've always had my eye on this game. I would love to check it out. I know that they recently released a chapter two, uh, which is why this we're doing chapter one first, because I said, well, it'd be kind of silly for me to do an indie view on the chapter two without playing chapter one. So this is going to be a two part indie view, believe it or not. We're going to be releasing this one today. And then in a week from now, I'm going to be releasing chapter two. Uh, so, what is this game? Well, it's really just, if you're listening to the music, it's just a phenomenal uh, click and, a point and click adventure game, guys. It has this charm to it, it's really just not exactly what you normally expect, but it just it all blends very well together, the characters, all that good stuff. I've been playing the game for about an hour now. Uh, but instead of actually continuing, which is what I usually do, I'm kind of showing you what's going on a little bit deeper into the game. I'm actually going to hit new game because I feel that the beginning is really going to show you the beauty of this game, the highlight of this game, uh, and what I like about this game. So, settings wise, not too terribly impressed with the settings. I, I don't, it's not a big deal. Basically, you have full screen either on or off, or really no resolution manipulation whatsoever. Uh, and it's just the settings are uh, not the greatest part of this game, but that's fine. We're going to hit new game. That's fine. Yes, erase my autosave. Do you wish to enable subtitles? Yes. I will be enabling subtitles, guys. Just so that way, if I need to skip text, you can kind of read it if you want to keep up on things here. Uh, and this is how the game kind of starts off. Very just uh, almost noir style. I love that. If you know me, if you watch my channel, you know that I love noir themes. I love the noir style of things. And it does a really good job of blending that with um, its just own style and charm. So I'm guessing Come something shady's now, going Professor. on. We know you're in there. Our boss needs that book of yours, and he needs it now. You can see the characters aren't like kind of stylized and neat looking. They almost look like they're all masks. I enjoy that though. It's really they, they still have a lot of you know personality in their eyes and the way they move their mouths. That's one way to kick down door. Gone. The boss ain't gonna like this one bit. That's because you're a moron. Gone. I talked to him an hour ago, and he swore they weren't going anywhere. Sir, don't worry. I think we got our lead. Well, go on. What is it? It's a noise, sir. Someone's drawn a cycle around the world. Obviously, the yes, game does feature voice child. acting, by the way. Goss and Charter. Uh, which is what very do well I done, care actually. About Goss and Charter. Just find out who has my book. Owen Bozzi. Kill them. Ugh. Alright. <laughs> and I just have to say, I wish I could download the soundtrack of this game. It's just so awesome. I'm just going to shut up here so you can just listen to that soundtrack. Those gorgeous visuals right there. Look at that, guys. That is amazing. It's stylized art, but it just does it so beautifully. I love that. Just that one scene, the music, just, ugh. Oh. 
<laughs> now, this is our main told? character. This is Buana and his brother. Oh, man, Buana. We've been owned. Check they just got shut out. down. Their power shut down. Due to the failure of the customer's part to pay the fee of electrical coverage, Armando Power Core has hereby terminated the contract with this facility. Power will resume once the sum of $4,000 is submitted to your Armando Power Core account. Man, <laughs> you're screwed now. You're screwed. Oh, man. How are we ever going to repair them when our pumps are down? Yeah. Gas so you can see the game kind of has like this kind of humor to it. This, gas. All the characters yeah, have like their own personality, it, and they, the voice acting really choice. lends itself to that. Have it's humorful, we? kind of charming, uh, you know, light hearted, very light hearted, I will say that. For, for sure, the game is very light hearted. The warning tape makes it look like a huge Christmas gift too. We'll and like I said, I just wish I could download that freaking musical track. Because that music track is just awesome. <laughs> now there is puzzles in this game. And there will, that is something that you'll be dealing with as you kind of get deeper into the game. There's different kinds of puzzles. And item manipulation too. We're going to be doing a lot of item manipulation in this game. To, you know, get things done basically. You know, be combining... Uh, brush with paint bucket, or you know, cheese plus mouse. You get the basic idea here. So we need to, of course, click on objects. You click around different parts of the screen. You're always going to want to be kind of searching around the screen for things you for you think for things to interact with, essentially. So we're trying to open this bracket up right here, uh, which allows us to open up the box. Let's open it up. Hey, it's a switch. I bet it's connected to all sorts of dangerous things. Let's mess with it, man. As you can see, him and his brother have a little bit of a haphazard <laughs> mentality where they just kind of are always sure looking to get in idea, trouble man? or in some form or manner. Me neither. Let's do it. You read my mind, man. <laughs> Here goes. These guys are just total geniuses. Uh. What was that sound? I love that background, man. Genius has shut down the power. Oops. <laughs> Alright. I think that gives you a good That's impression like of what the game's like. Definitely good a... Job, uh, not just that light-hearted humor, guys. That's what Let's they're go, aiming for folks. here. To and this is the first Jackson chapter. Jackson, and you will, you know what? To be honest with you, you feel that this is kind of a first you. chapter when you're playing this no, game. Right. Um, they're kind of introducing hey, to you all the characters, what they're like, um, who they that's are, what their personalities are like, and what their history is. Not only of the characters, but of the world itself in a way. And that's one thing I I love about the game. But also feel like it constrains the game because I want it to be in that gorgeous city off the distance. I want to explore. For it, but for the most part, for the first chapter, you're kind of stuck here in the dock area, the the outskirts of the city, basically trying to go. Well, you'll see kind of as we get deeper into the story of what's going on. But basically, kind of just stuck on this dock for the first chapter, uh, which you know is it's fine and it's entertaining. It's a lot of fun. It just I want to really get into that city because it's gorgeous looking and it's one thing that really has me excited about for chapter two uh, because this sets the stage for chapter two is essentially what this does it basically sets up the style the flavor the characters all for that chapter two to be just probably blow your mind uh, i'm not i'm not downplaying this chapter at all this chapter does a very good job of being very entertaining um in, you know introducing you to the characters and the style of the universe itself so right now we need to fix okay, this ladder here. Right here, Mr. Buona. Uh, we can skip through the text if we wanted to. And you can just basically click on object and kind of he'll, he'll tell you what his thoughts about the objects. He does a lot of talking to himself, as you know, most characters do in point and click games. So we'll click on the cash register here for its, or sorry, let's go with the mug. It's my favorite mug. It's got a dried out slice of lemon stuck at the bottom of it. Nice. But it's not something I feel like carrying around for no good reason. All right, so basically, there's a dried out piece of lemon in that. That'll become a, a a thing that we need later on. And pretty much everything you see in some form or manner almost is something that you will it's use in some fashion, or you need to keep tabs on. 
for instance. Never mind the suspiciously low price. Cow Nando, those gas and charter covers all of your fuel and transport needs. No questions asked. Call 99450 and we'll make enough for you. That number will be important use. here in a bit. So let's keep looking around. We got to fix the ladder. Uh, we got to find something to fix the ladder with. Hey! I found breadsticks. I love breadsticks. <laughs> Holy mother of monkeys. These breadsticks are stale. All right. So again, this has to look at a little bit of a rudimentary item system. You can basically scroll down to the bottom of your screen, click on items, drag them around, and then try to use them on objects. I doubt you want some. So for instance, yeah, we could try to use them on her. We could be like, oh, okay. Let's put them in the cast register. Or let's be do the smart thing and use it on the ladder, which is what they're obviously meant this for. This might be dumb enough to work. He sets up the ladder for us here. Man, dip it and now we have access Let's to another area of this building we, we can there. go to uh, and find more inner objects to interact with. Let's talk to Lena. She wants to get up there. She's looking for a book, a mysterious book. Man, I haven't been here since I was and really does a good job of also setting up kind of a mystery to the game. You're not really sure what's going on or why she's looking for this book or what is really is that's that even going on. Missing? Where'd he go? We've no idea. He just disappeared one day when we were kids, and we ain't heard from him ever since. But we've done just fine without him here. Aside from some slight financial instability, we've done fine. You find what you're looking for, lady? I want to get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I can't seem to find the book I'm looking for. I love how you just automatically you trust her. She's perhaps? female. It's supposed to be Let's back. trust her. A swirly symbol on its front. She's a little hot. Sure, no problem. I'll give her whatever I she wants. In this mess somewhere. Uh, so, her, his father disappeared, basically. Again, kind of setting up the story of what, you know, Buana's story is. His... He was obviously, I'm guessing he was adopted. So now we need to basically search around and look for this book. We gotta find a paintbrush. So that's where we hit our paintbrush. Ah, I wonder if we're gonna be using that in the future. Hint, hint, yes. It's a bunch of books on plants, trees, and herbs. No swirly sign books here. Sorry. So yeah, you can just click around the environment and find things that you'll be using. It's full to the brim with moth eaten claws. Yuck. Hey. And of course, anybody who is a you know, veteran of point and click games. They may find this a little bit easier than most people. Uh, all you really need to do is just kind of pay attention, click on everything and anything if it's at all possible too, which is another big thing. Uh, so like, just pretty much anything really makes it easy. I think I'm not sure if the subtitles appear uh, when the op. Let me. I want to see something. Kind of curious about that. Like if I were to turn the subtitles off, do. Okay, so the name of items do appear even with or without the subtitles on or off. So that does, in a way, make it a little bit easier to search for items. There is no hint system in this game. You kind of just I need to figure things out for yourself, which I will say does give us. the game a little bit of extra longevity, but not too much. You can beat the game pretty fairly quickly, at least chapter one at least. So stiff, uh, but that's okay, because, you know, it, it's yeah, short, it's, uh, you know, it's compact, it, but it still, hey, you know, manages lady. to be funny enough, charming enough. To not feel like it was, you know, you got ripped off at any point here. You found it. So this kind of sets up the premise for the universe and of the overall What's story so of what this particular this book thing? is all about. It's the journal of the journey down. The what? It's a collection of scribbles and notes on how to reach the Underland. The Underland? Isn't that sort of One thing I will illegal. say is that you'll notice that yes, the characters are so talking sometimes the and their lips are moving illegal. not necessarily in tune with the it. words. But, you know, it's an indie game. I'm not going to hold that against them too much. There is a little bit of also uh, choices that you can make, decisions. You can basically ask them questions, Respect learn a, bit, a little bit more about the universe. Uh, that's all, The game What's is for? rich with lore Aren't and personality, you basically. You can talk to all the characters, oh, discover a lot about so this universe. Far. Or if you want, you can skip all the conversations well, and learn very little. But there is certain things you, know, you do need to talk to people about to progress sure, you know, deeper into the game. Of them. We recently became customers. You together with yeah, the, yeah, the graphics are just very day. stylish, but I, I like them. They're very charming. They're very good. The uh, and the characters do not, you know, do not, they don't stick out from the backgrounds. You know, they do mash very well with their environments. 
very well. And sometimes, depending on you know the point and click game that you're playing, sometimes the characters can they don't fit in. These characters look part of their environment. They all match up very well with the art and the theme, and it's all very well done. The music, I can't underline enough how awesome the music is. The voice acting will be dependent upon your preferences, your tastes. You could like the voice acting. I personally like it, but I could see where some people will be like, oh, this is, throws me off a little bit. All right, so we need to turn these dials, but for, for us to do to turn these dials, we have to match up these chords. So this one, for instance, obviously is red. Uh, this one obviously is yellow, and this one is obviously green. And then we need to remember what the number of this particular building is. I know I was talking over them while they were talking, but because uh, I've done this part before and I want to talk to you more about the game than anything else. So it's 450. Ah, that's it. Hello, Professor. This is Lena. Calm down, calm down. What's happened? Good God. Did they steal anything? You no, play the game, by the way, right primarily with your uh, your mouse. Don't worry, You're not going to be using your controller or anything like that. There's no controller support, this but that's not a big yours. deal. The game is Does just fine fly? with the, you know, just playing it with your mouse. Um, the pile of rust out there hasn't flown in for that 20 years. Pile of rust out there hasn't been flown for 20 years. Then you better get her in order fast, Buana. I'm a customer, remember? You know, the kind of person who has way too much money for their own good. Get my drift? When you put it that way... Buana Air is at your service. Let's go run this by my mechanic, okay? Here she is. A precious airplane. So she needs the airplane up and running so that way she can, I guess... I'm not really sure what she needs the airplane for. She just needs to get the plane up and running. What do you think, lady? A beauty, isn't she? But unfortunately, the plane is a bit of a giant pile of poop. It's not necessarily... A great crazy, piece of machinery. Lady, it's broken. It's missing a lot of parts, and that's what sets up the theme for the first chapter: is you getting this plane up and running, uh, and basically airborne. And that's kind of what you're going to be doing for the entire first chapter: is getting this plane up and running while dealing with all the characters and different things and puzzles that you may encounter throughout the first chapter here. Do you still think you can fly her? Hey, there's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> I guess you're right, Buana. Let's give it a Basically, shot. Basically, that's why I didn't want to that's start the this video off of deeper into the, the game itself, because Great. the journey of this that's game, pun hear. intended, Just is kind of the, you know, the enjoyment of this game. The, the puzzles, the things we'll you'll be dealing with, the different characters you'll be meeting throughout the story and, you know, throughout the different areas is kind of what the enjoyment's going to come from this game. So, you may, that's why I kind of started off at the beginning, because it sets the overall theme. It gives you a good taste of what the game is like like and I, that is one thing i will say i like about the, this chapter one is it really gives you a good bite of what the game is like within almost the first hour of the game what to expect what the themes are like and it pretty much keeps that consistent as you're moving throughout the entire you know first chapter of dealing with all the different characters of Juana's sense of humor and like i said there is no hand holding in this particular chapter for sure there's no hint so you kind of do need to figure everything out for yourself kind of from visual clues from listening to the characters you know if a character mentions that he's afraid of rats well you're going to learn that obviously you're probably going to need a rat in some way or form so let's go ahead and uh move through the area here we're going to need to uh you can basically search most of the areas find a lot of things like i said let's check the fridge here for instance Oh, I love cheese. I better grab this last piece before hint, he hint, that piece it. of cheese will be used in some way, probably to help us, for instance, capture a rat. Um, and you just need to use your logic kind of to figure things out, guys. It's not too difficult. Um, you can, you know, get lost occasionally, for instance. It's an old bucket of white paint. Well, we're going to need, what do we need, need that. that possibly for? Well, we're going to take that, our paintbrush, dip it into the bucket Let's of paint. Dip it white. And like I said, I've been playing for an hour, so I kind of figured out certain things to do here. Yeah, I, I will even say that even I got lost occasionally. Um, and but just remember, just you know, searching around, running your mouse all over the screen, looking for anything at all things. So, for instance, this area over here, make sure just to run your mouse over everything. Uh, no matter what screen you're looking at because it'll help you find objects and clues and things to interact with that'll help you get to certain areas or find certain things. So for instance, like in the plane, you might think, okay, well, there might be nothing in this area, but you're wrong. There is something in this area that you could use here, for instance, a wrench. 
Now, you will be collecting probably a lot of items, and you may not know what all, all of them do necessarily when you first get your hands on them, but all of them do play a pivotal role. Uh, of course, indicative with, you know, the point-and-click genre, guys. So just, you know, pay attention. That's the key thing. It's not too difficult. All you need to do is just pay attention. So, for instance, he's going to take his bed now and use it for as a net. Who knows for what? I have actually figured out a use for this particular item, but you get the idea. That's me and Kito on our Rasta bike. The front wheel couldn't touch the ground, so we had to get off and push it to change direction. What a lovely bike that was. I found this old bike once in the bay, and Kito hotted it up like crazy. That's Kito with his beloved tool. You get the idea. It gives you an idea of what the characters are like. I'm going to head around for a little couple more areas here. Uh, we'll head back out. Uh, oh, there it is. There's a Click on the ladder, sir. And there's a lot, there's a, quite a few areas to kind of explore, and more areas will be opened up to you as you kind of figure out where to go and how to manipulate certain items to get to certain areas. Um, and it's just it's all very stylized, it's all very 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 well voice acted, um, and it does a really good job of just setting scene. There is also Steam cards if you're into that kind of thing. Some people are. Uh, there is no Steam achievements. Uh, there's no leaderboards or anything like that, of course. Uh, so basically, we need to get on this boat, for instance. But we need to prove that we have a, uh, a password, basically. He, the only way we're going to get on this boat is if we have a password. I'm just going to skip the conversation. Um, of course, we don't know the password, so we'll just say Chunky Chimps. So, we need to find a way to get that password. Well, there is a way to get that password, and I'll just go ahead and do that really quick for us here. For us to get that password, we're going to need to get that password from uh, some sailors to prove that... We are one of the sailors. Uh, we need to go over here and actually talk to them. So normally, what I would, what we were supposed to do, is kind of just mix the paint and the shirt. But for us to learn to do that first, we need to get the information that we need to from these sailors themselves. So we're gonna talk to them for a little while. Again, I'm just kind of skipping the conversation, man, uh, because I just want to show you a little bit more. There's a lot of different characters, a lot of different. Uh, things to interact with. See, for instance, I'm the new deckhand ship, but I forgot the password. Sorry, kid. I ain't. You're no sailor. You ain't got the right clothes. So we need the right clothes, which allows us the ability to finally take our paintbrush and shirt and mix them together, which we'll just do right here in front of them. And that created that item that kind of looks like theirs, and now we could talk to them and get the password. And that's just one example of different ways that you'll be overcoming different kinds of, um, you know, puzzles and all that. I did notice that there is sometimes, depending when you're shifting from area to area, there's kind of like a slowdown, particularly right there. I don't know if you catch that. There's just a little bit of like a jerk animation, and that was that has nothing to do with the fact that I'm filming it at all. It's just it's it always kind of does that. And just certain areas kind of have a little bit of a slow down. Um, it's not necessarily anything that breaks the game, but just like I said, it's just something I've noticed, guys. So to wrap up the first part of our indie view of the Journey Down, guys, it's a beautiful game. The music is amazing. Uh, the game is simple and easy to enjoy. The characters I find funny, but that's a personal opinion, and you may feel differently. Uh, some people find different things, you know, just different things funny. But in all, it's a fantastic first chapter, guys, and it really does a good job of setting the stage for the characters. You get to learn who Buana is, his history, meeting all sorts of strange characters that fill you in on also the rich universe that Sky Goblin has made here, guys. Other than that slowdown I just was talking about, you know, from area to area occasionally, but, you know, nothing, certainly nothing that prevented me from enjoying the game, guys. There really isn't that many bugs at all in the game. Now, replay value is an issue, as it kind of is just a playthrough once type of game, and maybe you can come back to it in a couple of months or a year, that type of thing, and play it again and enjoy it. So just keep that in mind. But I hope you've enjoyed the first part of our indie view of the journey down guys next week we check out chapter two and i am very excited about that i enjoyed chapter one quite a bit though i think you will enjoy it especially if you're a fan of you know point and click games if you're looking for something just relaxing to play get it on the mobile device where you can just sit back relax one afternoon with a nice cup of coffee relax 
and just play this game. It's really just smooth and, you know, easy to enjoy, basically. So big thanks to the developer for a chance to check this game out. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, and I'll keep bringing you awesome games, guys. Till next time, play more indie games. Thank you.